Okay, so we're going over uh, section 10.3, parametric equations and calculus. So in section 10.2, we talked about parametric equations. Now we're going to do some calculus on them. We'll start with the derivative. So um, what the derivative function is, it's, is a, it's a function that associates with each input x uh, an output, which is the slope of the tangent line. So if you have a uh, curve defined by a parametric equations x equals f of t and y equals g of t, and the derivative is defined by a set of parametric equations, this way we're allowed to um, um, associate each x-coordinate with a slope of a tangent line. The x-coordinate comes from the same x-formula, x equals f of t, and the um, slope of the tangent line comes from y prime, which is dy dx, which we find by just taking dy dt and dividing it by dx dt, right? So if you remember uh, what then what this gives you is um, the change in y over the change in x, so it's dy dt over dx dt. So the y's go on top, the x's go on the bottom. We'll start here, nice and easy. In exercises five through eight, find dy dx, right? And so rather than eliminating the parameter and then using our rules uh, from before, we're giving our, um, we're given our curve using parametric equations. So then, um, dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt. If you keep writing that down, then you'll remember it. Um, dx dt goes in the denominator, and um, that's just the power function. Bring down the exponent, take one away from the exponent, and then um, dy dt, that's that one, that goes in the, de in the numerator, and that's negative one. We can clean up this complex fraction by um, uh, multiplying top and bottom by three, and the t to the negative two thirds goes up on top, t to the positive two thirds, and there you go. But as I say, um, this is it, it really to be complete. It, we need to associate with each x coordinate a um, uh, a slope of a tangent line, and so this is just associating uh, the a uh, 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 slope, but not with an x coordinate. But the x uh, parametric equation shouldn't change. X of t should still be the cube root of t. And so all of this is what makes your derivative. Now this is especially important when you're gonna go find the second derivative, right? So now when you go and find the second derivative, um, d, sorry, that should be a y. This is the second derivative. Um, you might be tempted to just take the derivative of this. Um, but because it is defined parametrically, uh, we're going to take the derivative of this and divide it by the derivative of this uh, because it is a par because they are defined parametrically. This is why you do that. This is what makes sense to me. So um, to take the derivative of the uh, y prime, which is then going to be uh, two negative two t to the negative one-third, and then divide it by uh, the derivative of x, which we had already done, one-third t to the negative two-thirds. This problem didn't um, ask for the second derivative, but I'm just showing you why uh, I defined the derivative as I did. We can clean this up, um, Multiplying top and bottom by three will give us a negative six. Subtracting the exponents, negative one third plus two thirds, t to the one third. And again, this is also parametric. This gives us the concavity, and um, 
the uh, uh, we need to associate it with each x coordinate and so the x of t is the same that we had all along the cube root of t okay uh, for the curve below find the points on the curve corresponding to two equal to t equals two find the slope of the tangent line is the graph concave up or concave down at that point? So uh, for the curve below the point, a point has an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. We get our x-coordinate from this formula, plug in 2, 4 minus 4 is 0. We get our y-coordinate from this formula, plug in 2, 8 minus 6 is 2. So when t equals 2, we're at the point 0, 2. Okay? Find the slope of the tangent line. That's given to me by the first derivative, dy dx. Um, but um, dy dx, uh, we find by finding dy dt, and dividing it by dx dt. So dy dt is 3t squared minus 3, and dx dt is 2t. And we can write that as two separate frac uh, fractions. Um, and this will be 3 halves t minus 3 halves t to the negative 1. And so then my x of t, because the derivative associates with uh, each um, x value, a slope of a tangent line, and the x of t is the same. If you want to know which um, x coordinate you're pairing up, it's just t squared minus 4. Okay, so then what we have is um, dy dt, and we want to evaluate it when t is equal to 2. And we just, we're not, we don't care about the x coordinate, we know the x coordinate is 0, um, and its corresponding slope we find by putting in 2 here, which will then give us 3, the, it will go away, minus 3 quarters. 12 quarters minus 3 quarters, 9 quarters. And this will be my slope of my tangent line. Is the graph concave up or concave down at that point? Uh, to test whether the graph is concave up or concave down, we need to look at the second derivative. All right? And so let me carve out a little spot here to write down the second derivative. And so the second derivative um, is, again, the derivative of this function, which is 3 halves uh, plus 3 halves t to the negative 2. This is my uh, second derivative. Um, but again, this is also a parametric. I'm just going to ignore the x-coordinate because that's what the second derivative does, is it associates with each x-coordinate a, uh, uh, a concavity a concavity value. Um, ooh, I'm sorry. I forgot to divide it. So uh, then we're supposed to divide by... Um, the derivative of the x, which is 2t. Two 2t. Two t. I'm not going to clean this up. d squared y, d second derivative, evaluate it at t equals 2 then, 
we just plug 2 into the formula and you get uh, 3 halves plus 3 halves times 1 fourth 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth all divided by 4 and you can punch that into the calculator 3 halves plus 3 halves times 1 fourth divided by 4 15 over 32 is what I'm getting which is bigger than 0 therefore concave up okay where is the tangent line horizontal? Where is the tangent line vertical? So what tells us uh, whether the tangent line is horizontal is whether the slope is 0. If we look back at our derivative, 3t squared minus 3 over 2t. 3t squared minus 3, all divided by 2t. And you can see that um, what is going to make the derivative 0 is when the numerator is 0 and the denominator is not. So we need 3t squared minus 3 to equal 0. So 3t squared needs to equal 3. So t squared needs to equal 1. So t needs to equal plus or minus 1. And at those points, the um, tangent line should be horizontal. Where is the tangent line vertical and the tangent line is vertical where the slope is undefined with a zero in the denominator and not zero in the numerator so slope undefined will happen when 2t is zero or t is equal to zero so when t is zero at that point my tangent line is vertical. The slope is undefined. Okay. In exercises 9 through 18, find dy dx, find the first derivative and the second derivative, and find the slope and concavity, if possible, at the given value of the parameter. So again, my parameter is not t, now it's theta, so dy dx is just going to be dy d theta divided by dx d theta. Um, and so then dx d theta, dy d theta is going to be um, sine of theta. dx d theta is going to be negative I'm sorry, 1 minus uh, the sine of theta. And then dy dx evaluated at theta equals pi. We put in pi into the formula and you get 0 over 1, which is 0. For our second derivative, um, we follow the formula for the derivative of a parametric equation. We take the derivative of this and divide it by the derivative of x. So the derivative of x is 1 minus the sine of theta. Sorry, ooh, I made a mistake here. And the derivative of theta minus sine theta is 1 minus cosine theta.
and so then uh, 1 minus cosine theta is what should be here and up on top we're going to take the derivative of this function um, but that is a quotient so we have to use the quotient rule derivative of the top is the cosine of theta bottom left alone 1 minus the cosine of theta minus um, take the derivative leave the top alone sine of theta and um, take the derivative of the bottom which is also sine of theta and then uh, divide by the denominator squared and so then that is going to end up on the bottom and you're going to end up with a cube here so let me just go ahead and expand that and there we go we can clean this up um, and when we distribute we will get 1 minus cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta all divided by 1 minus the cosine cubed cosine cubed I'm sorry, 1 minus the cosine of theta cubed. Okay. Okay, so let's see. And, um, the cosine squared of theta so this right here these two make minus one so it looks like this is always zero so I need to look and see if I did something wrong okay so dy dx is dy d theta the sine of theta divided by dx d theta one minus the cosine of theta that's right and then we find the derivative the second derivative find the derivative of this which is derivative of the top cosine bottom left alone one minus cosine times leave the top alone and then take the derivative of the cosine uh, one minus the cosine but uh, nope so that looks right so then it looks like there we go and when we plug in, oh, this 3 does not belong there. And when we plug in pi, we, all, we always get 0 except whatever, except that uh, intervals of 2 pi. So then d squared y over dx squared has to equal, um, evaluated at theta equals pi is going to be zero. Cosine of theta minus cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the problem. That's not very, okay. So when I distribute, this does not become a one. This becomes a cosine of theta. And that the second derivative was always going to be zero meant that this has no concavity anywhere it means that this was a line and I couldn't see how that was going to be a line but when we distribute we get cosine of theta so we get cosine of theta minus one over one minus the cosine of theta cubed and if you notice cosine theta minus 1 and 1 minus cosine of theta are opposites so we can cancel one of these out when you divide opposites you get a negative one not a positive one and so then you get um, 
cosine uh, negative 1 over 1 minus the cosine of theta squared. And so then this tells me that this is always going to be negative where it's defined, and so my graph is always concave down. So when we evaluate this at pi, we get uh, 1 minus negative 1. So we have a negative 1 in the numerator, and 1 minus negative 1 is 2, negative 1 half. In exercises 19 through 22, find an equation of the tangent line to the curve at the given point. I'm only going to do this one. Um, to find the equation of a line, you need to find the um, point and the slope, right? Um, the point is given to you, and, but now we need to find the slope. And so, um, again, uh, dy dx is given to you by dy dt divided by dx dt um, but dy dt is 2 cosine theta I'm sorry my parameter is not t my parameter is theta so 2 cosine theta divided by uh, 3 sine theta and the cosine divided by the sine is the cotangent. Okay, the only problem with this is that we can only use this formula if we know the corresponding um, the corresponding theta value, right? And so, again, this is also where it is important to uh, know that your derivative is not by itself. Your derivative associates with each x-coordinate a slope of a tangent line and so then you need a formula for the x-coordinates and the x-coordinates come from um, x of theta is 2 minus 3 cosine theta but we know the x-value the x-value is um, 4 plus 3 square root of 3 over 2 and so then we're trying to figure out um, what theta is what theta will be um, that will make uh, 2 minus 3 cosine theta equal to 4 plus 3 square root of 3 all divided by 2. Um, so if we multiply both sides by 2 we'll get 4 minus 6 cosine theta equals 4 plus 3 square root of 3. The 4's go away. Divide both sides by negative 6 and you will get that the cosine of theta is equal to negative the square root of 3 over 2 there are two angles that give you a cosine value of negative the square root of 3 over 2 and that is uh, there there is one angle in quadrant 2 and one angle in quadrant 3. And the reference angle to end up with the square root of 3 over 2 that comes from the 30, 60, 90 triangle. So this is uh, 60 degrees, this is 1, this is 2, this is the square root of 3. And so if you want a cosine value to be the square root of 3 over 2 
you're looking at 30 degrees which is pi over 6 that gives you the reference angle so then your two possible angles are one-sixth away from one six pi I'm sorry five pi over six or one-sixth past one seven pi over six um, but you also want your y coordinate to be positive two and so if you use Pi over six. So if you use um, five pi over six and you put it into this formula, um, then your sine will be positive, uh, and it, the sine of pi over six, sine of thirty degrees, will be one half times two is three. I'm sorry, times two is one plus three is four, and so then you will get a y value of 4 but we are want a y we're wanting a y value of 2 so so 5 pi over 6 doesn't work if you use 7 pi over 6 your sine value will be negative 2 times negative 1 half will be negative 1 3 plus negative 1 is 2 and so this is the one that we're after so x is equal to so theta is equal to uh, 7 pi over 6 okay so now that we know um, theta now we can find dy dx evaluated at theta equals 7 pi over 6 and we just go to our derivative formula the cotangent of 7 pi over 6 um, in 7 pi over 6 is in quadrant 3 in quadrant 3, the tangent is positive, so its reciprocal is also positive. And the tangent of pi over 6, 30 degrees, is 1 over the square root of 3, opposite over adjacent. And so then the cotangent is the square root of 3. Okay, so that's the slope of my tangent line. Now I need the equation. So for the equation, it's y minus the y-coordinate, 2 is equal to my slope square root of 3 times x minus the x coordinate and the x coordinate is 4 plus 3 square root of 3 all divided by 2 and there's my equation of the tangent line Okay, so in 5a, uh, using um, rectangular equations, we found that the uh, arc length was uh, the definite integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. And it turns out that if you can parameterize your... Um, your um, function then you can find the arc length using the formula below so if a smooth curve c is given by x equals f of t and y equals g of t such that c does not intersect itself on the interval from a to b except possibly at the endpoints then the arc length of c over the integral over the interval is given by um, the definite integral from a to b of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt. So, in exercises 49 through 54, find the arc length of the curve on the given interval. Right? So, we want to find the parametric, I'm sorry, we want to find the arc length from t equals 1 to t equals 4 um, of this curve. So the theorem tells us that this is the definite integral integral from 1 to 4 of the square root 
uh, dx dt is 12t squared. Uh, dy dt is um, 6 t squared, and that gets squared dt. So this becomes the definite integral from 1 to 4 of the square root of 144t squared plus 36t to the fourth dt. Okay, so um, this is not a, a basic antiderivative, so we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra. Um, 36 divides both 36 and 144, and t squared divides both t squared and t to the fourth. So we can factor out a uh, 36 t squared, and when we pass it through the square root, it becomes 6 t. We'll go ahead and put the 6 over here, and this is the definite integral from 1 to 4. And then we'll just leave the t over here, square root of um, the 144 divided by 36 is 4. And then the uh, 36t to the 4th divided by uh, uh, 36t squared is just t squared dt. Okay. Now, easiest is best, so we can... Even though you see a product, there's no need for integration by parts. And this is a u substitution. So u is equal to t squared plus 4. Uh, du is 2t dt. And so then t dt can be replaced with du over 2. So we end up with, let's change our limits of integration. This is an, a t value. We make it a u value by squaring it and adding 4. So that gives us 5. This is a t value. We make it a u value by squaring it and adding 4. 16 plus 4 is 20. And then du over 2, we bring out the 1 half. There's already a 6 there. So we get a factor of 3 outside. Uh, t dt we replace with du and then um, the 4 plus t squared becomes u and so we rewrite that as u to the 1 half. So then this becomes 3 times um, u to the add 1 to the exponent 3 halves multiplied by the reciprocal 2 thirds and we're going to evaluate this from 5 to 20. Uh, the threes go away, and then you get 2 times 20 to the 3 halves minus 2 times 5 to the 3 halves, and we're good to go. Um, derive the formula for the circumference of a circle of radius r. Right? So this is kind of neat that we can derive the formula and know where the formula comes from, or at least one place where it comes from. Uh, if we write the, uh, if we put the circle of radius r centered at the origin, you should know that an equation for it is x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Um, this is a constant, right? R is a constant. Okay, so um, now we can parameterize this. Um, uh, we already saw earlier uh, that um, uh, what, what circles look like in parameterized form. So we can parameterize this as x equals um, the cosine of theta times uh, r, 
and y is equal to r sine of theta. And earlier we saw that when we saw a problem like this, it uh, becomes a circle. Um, uh, looking at this right now, I don't know exactly other than from memory how you can get from x squared plus y squared equals r squared uh, to um, x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, other than we just did it a little while ago, uh, and which is going backwards now. You can verify that, but how do I? How can I get there? Nope, can't see it. But other than just to go backwards. Okay, so here's my parameterization, and if I want the circumference of the circle, then theta needs to go from 0 to 2 pi. And so then the circumference uh, circumference is equal to the definite integral from 0 to 2 pi of the square root of dx d theta squared, which is r negative r sine theta squared plus um, dy d theta squared. So r cosine theta squared d theta. Um, when we do this, from 0 to 2 pi, uh, we get uh, the square root of r squared cos uh, sine squared theta plus r squared cosine squared theta d theta. And we could then factor out an r squared, leaving behind the cosine squared, I'm sorry, the sine squared, plus the cosine squared of theta d theta, which is then just from 0 to 2 pi, which is then just um, r squared, the square root of r squared is just r. So the r can, is a constant, has nothing to do with theta, that comes out, and then this is just d theta, and so then this is theta times r evaluated from 0 to 2 pi, which is then just 2 pi r. And that's your formula for the circumference of a circle. That's kind of neat. Here's your homework for that section. This will be due on the 30th of April as well. Have a good night.